Tell the elders, don't tell me anything. But there's an answer for that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 177, It is not righteous that you turn your faces east or west, but righteousness is this, that one should believe in Allah and the last day, and the angels and the book and the prophets, those who keep up prayer, these are the ones who are true and are they who guard against evil. These are the people who don't turn towards east or west. They are the ones who do not say, but yeah, I come from a western society or I come from an eastern society. It doesn't matter which part of the world you are. All it matters is how much of yourself do you turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The last word that was used here was muttaqun. In Surah Al-Baqarah, in the same Surah, verse number 2, Allah says, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهُ هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ This book is nothing but a reminder for those who guard against evil. Therefore, wherever you are, in whichever land you are, the only thing that can salvate you from the evil is the Qur'an in turn with the message of Ahlul Bayt, and in this case for Muharram, it is Imam al Hussein. Why have we stopped Amr al Ma'roof? Why is it so difficult to tell our youth? So what? So what if they get upset at us? Tell them in a nice manner once, twice, three times. On my flight here from Dubai to Toronto, the program on that screen. The world's strictest parents. You might have seen that, some of you. And they showed these two youth from London who went to South Africa. Today, our youth think, Ya Allah, that, you know, Islam is a very strict religion. Yes, it is too strict. We need our freedom. So these two youth, they go to South Africa for about eight days. And they are the guests of a family that has a son and a daughter, and the parents are extremely strict. These two, girl and boy, come from London. They are very free. They are modern. They don't like to be told what to do. This girl who is 16 years old, from the age of 12, she was wearing makeup. So when they arrive in South Africa, they go into their rooms, the father then tells them, come to the table. And he sets the laws down. This is what you're going to do, this is what you're going to do, this is what you're going to do. If you don't like it, leave. They were shocked. And for the eight days they were there, for the five, Monday to Friday, they went to school. Even the school, this particular school in South Africa was so strict that the girls had to make sure they were not allowed to do anything but have a straight back ponytail. The boys could not have any hairstyle they want. They had to shave the sides. And they were not used to it to an extent whereby the girl had to be expelled twice in a week. The boy had to be expelled once in a week. And when their parents found out about it, they were distressed. Brothers and sisters, after only one week, this boy goes back home to meet his mother again in London. The mother opens the door, hugs the son, tells the son, it's been such a long time, come and sit down, let me make you a cup of tea. The boy says, no mother, let me make you a cup of tea. Is Islam very strict? They were not Muslims. But they ensured they put the right values in the children. They ensured that the right morals and ethics were put into the children, so that they come straight, they grow up with ethics and akhlaq. We have sent the Prophet down to teach you the best of morals. Imam Ali ibn Abu Talib also says that even if you don't follow any religion, at least make sure you have good akhlaq. Do you know why he said that? 
He didn't say so that if you don't want to follow Islam. He says because if you have the right akhlaq, if you have the good morals, if you forbid what is evil and enjoin in what is good, you will realize that Islam is the right path. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. La ikraha fi din qad sabayin arushtu min al ghayl This is another one that our youths talk about, yes? That there is no compulsion in religion. They use this verse all the time. You cannot force me, mother. You cannot force me, father. If I want to do something, I will do it. Don't force me. La ikraha fi din There is no compulsion in religion. But look at the verse that is after. La ikraha fi din qad sabayin arushtu min al ghayl Surely, right is distinct from evil. Evil is distinct from right. Let us now reflect. Today is the third night, but it was the second day. Muharram. It was the day that the journey finally came to an end. After Qasar Ibn Maqatil, close by Nainawa, Imam al Hussein is on his horse and he arrives in a place whereby his horse stops. It stops. And Imam al Hussein gets off from the horse. He goes to another horse. In some riwayat, it is said, five horses. So he asks a person, what is the name of this place? And this person says, Nainawa. Imam Hussain says, no. What is the name of this place? Another person says, Akr. No. Abdullah Hussein says, what is the name of this place? Someone says, Shah Tefurat. No. Finally, somebody comes to the Imam. Says, Ya Ibn Rasulullah, this place is called Karbala. Imam Hussein tells his people, all of you, unload. We have arrived now at a place whereby our camels will feed but we will be slaughtered. He takes a bit of the sand and he smells it and when he smells it tears come down his eyes because he remembers the message of Umm Salma when he was leaving Medina. He was leaving Medina on the 28th of Rajab after he says farewell to his mother in the middle of the night and his brother Hassan He's going inside the house, Imam al Hussein. And Umm Salama says, Ya Hussein, you are going to a place whereby your grandfather told me about. I'm asking you to please don't not go. But Imam Hussein says, Oh mother, it is only right for me to achieve what has been destined for me. Shall I show you what will happen to me in this place? And he faces, he points to us Karbala, and Umm Salama sees that he is being slaughtered on the sands of Karbala. He says, oh, Hussein, she says, oh Hussein, there was a time when you were small, and your grandfather wanted to be left alone in the room. But you went into the room, and I came after looking for you. When Rasulullah looks at Umm Salma, Umm Salma sees him holding Hussein ibn Ali tight and weeping and crying. Umm Salma says, what is it, Ya Rasulullah? And he says, shall I tell you what I just saw? And Umm Salma says, yes, tell me. I saw that Angel Jibrail just came to me right now. And he says, oh Rasulullah, do you love this grandson of yours, Hussein? And Rasulullah said, yes. Do you know, Rasulullah, that he will be slaughtered by your ummah in a plain called Karbala? Do you want to see some of the sand of Karbala? At that time, Angel Jibrail takes some of the sand and puts it into the hand of Muhammad. 
Muhammad smells it and he starts weeping and crying. He takes some of that sand and he gives it to Umm Salma.